Football gave Mussolini a profile, and he used it to good effect, though there is some debate as to how much he really liked the game. Mussolini fa sì che si possa avere la organizzazione del campionato del mondo del 34. Non tanto per vincerlo, ma per far vedere che l'organizzazione era tale in Italia da poter organizzare un campionato del mondo. As they were not members of FIFA, England would not be there. The defeat of the English football 11, wearing white shirts, by Czechoslovakia in their first international in Prague for 35 years, has caused critics much discussion on the question whether English soccer is as preeminent as it used to be. And the home side, playing very precise football, delight their supporters by shattering the legend of English supremacy. After this defeat a month before the finals, Pozza said the English would have progressed no further than the quarterfinals had they been in Italy. In the event, the 1934 World Cup was overshadowed by controversy, especially the alleged manipulation of referees by the hosts. Nowhere was this more evident than in the semi-final between Pozza's Italy and Meisel's Austria. Hugo Meisel, jo, náš hlavní šéf, nás upozornil, že se dozvěděl, to měli ty špiony jasně nebo něco, že, 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 že se dozvěděl, že Mussolini, Mussolini pozval švédského rozhodčího toho a toho, který nám to bude pískat. Rozumíte tomu? Tak si dávejte pozor a my si dávali pozor. Ten nás tak podve, takový takový podvody, co dělal. Jo. Já si pamatuju na, na, na okamžik, že oni nám dali první gól a ty italský hráči z třech metrů ho, ho vzali, rozumíte, toho našeho a donesli ho až do gólu a on odpískal vlastní gól. The incident ended the friendship between Pozzo and Meisel. That goal also meant Italy were in the final where Eklund, the controversial Swedish referee, was again in charge, which did little to quell suspicious minds. Italy faced another of the Danubian school, Czechoslovakia. Having gone a goal behind, the Italians equalized with just nine minutes left. In extra time, Italy scored the winner after a handball by Miazza was ignored by the referee. Italy were world champions. Though on their return to Prague, the Czechoslovakian team received a tumultuous welcome. Za prvé, uh, ty hráči byli vítání ne jako poražení, ale jako morální mistři světa. Protože uh, tehdy také tisk o tom psal, že švédský rozhodčí finále naše mužstvo poškodil. Italian supporters rallied to Highbury to urge their men on to victory in the great international and the stands are packed with some 60,000 spectators and tremendous enthusiasm. Fainting already, it can't be the heat, so it must be excitement or, or spaghetti. Prince Arthur of Connaught, with the bearded Signor Grandi, shakes hands first with Arsenal, uh, sorry, England, wearing white shirts, then with the Italian team. In England, the World Cup had gone almost unnoticed. When the Italians came to London five months after winning the World Cup, it was billed as the match of the century. It later became known as the Battle of Highbury, as tempers flared. As early as the second minute, Italy were down to ten men, through injury to Orsi. Three up in less than a quarter of an hour. A nasty shot for the team which is referred to as world soccer champions. The Italians fought back, and although they lost 3-2, it was now their turn to consider themselves moral winners. Well tried, Italy. Isolationism was very much the order of the day in England. The English saw little reason to question their superiority, despite the growing number of defeats experienced abroad. Herbert Chapman, manager of the Arsenal team, was one Englishman who did follow developments on the continent. Along with his friends Meisel and Pozzo, 
Chapman was the third of the great Napoleons of interwar football in Europe. He joined Arsenal in 1925, a club that had yet to win a trophy. Football between 1920 and 1930, by and large, was dominated by, by teams from the north, and specifically by Huddersfield Town. And then Herbert Chapman, who had already guided Huddersfield Town to three consecutive league championships, moved to Arsenal. And within five years, Chapman had taken Arsenal to the 1930 FA Cup final. And then the following year, they became the first London team to win a league championship. In the 1930 FA Cup final, Chapman's two clubs came head to head as Arsenal played Huddersfield. Like Pozzo and Meisel, Chapman was an innovator. It was he who first pulled a third man into defence, and before the 1930 final even tried to sign a foreigner. But the transfer of Rudy Hyden, the goalkeeper of the Wonder Team, was blocked by the Ministry of Labour, one of the many hurdles Chapman faced in his career. Famous for the appearance of the Graf Zeppelin, the 1930 final saw Arsenal win the first of seven trophies. In a decade, they completely dominated. Here's Mr. Herbert Chapman, the famous manager with his lads at Highbury. And now I'm going to ask him to introduce them to you. Mr. Chapman? Yes. Well, I must apologize this morning. I'm so husky, I can scarcely speak. La -de -da -de -da, la -de -da -de -da. In January 1934, Chapman died, age 58. It's not inconceivable to think of, of Herbert Chapman as uh, if he'd lived even another five or six years, possibly moving on from Arsenal to becoming an England manager. Chapman would have had uh, England in the World Cups the next night. You know, he understood football as an international game. He understood what we understand as modern football. Obviously, Arsenal lost a lot when Chapman died, but arguably English football lost a lot as well, particularly the England national team. In an increasingly professional game, the strict adherence to the amateur ethic meant isolation had also been the name of the game for Germany, the biggest nation in Europe, though in 1936, Berlin hosted the Olympic Games. Hijacked by the Nazis for their propaganda, the 1936 Olympics are remembered as one of the most political ever. The games left an indelible impression on those taking part. Ma atmosfera fredda. Però non c'è mai stato nessun eh, nessuno che avesse gridato qualcosa contro o che eh, avesse fatto delle, piantato delle grane, no? È stata era era un, un esercito, era tutto esercito. C'era Hitler, c'era sempre lei salutava così lui, eh? noi salutavamo così, lui salutava così. Comunque, certo però che i tedeschi sono gente dura, eh? Oh no, no, no. The World Cup was now the premier football tournament, but the final between Italy and an Austrian team coached by Jimmy Hogan still attracted huge interest. Italy's win, playing a strong physical game, was celebrated as much as their World Cup triumph. Ma è una strategia molto semplice, non tenere tanto la palla nei piedi, non, 
non eh, driblare 